Hi everyone, I'm Paul with Madcap Software. Today, in this video, I'm gonna talk about ServiceNow, how to integrate it with your Flare project so that you can generate output and publish all that stuff up to ServiceNow. I'm gonna talk about a lot of things in this video, I'm gonna cover a lot of ground. First, we're gonna look at things that you need to know and set up before you even start getting into Flare. Uh, then we're going to look at all of the steps. We're gonna go through all the options. I'll point out maybe some gotchas or some best practices along the way. And then we're going to, we're gonna have a, a test uh, project and we're gonna run through some scenarios to see how different settings affect what you get up on ServiceNow. So a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, you ready to do this? Here we go. All right, so before we even get into Flare and start putting all of this together, want to take a look at ServiceNow and some of the things that need to be set up, some of the things you, you want to be aware of. Now, throughout this video, I'm actually gonna pretend that I'm two people. I'm gonna pretend that I'm a ServiceNow administrator. So that's, what I'm, that's who I'm gonna be when I go into ServiceNow here at the beginning to set things up. And later on when I connect uh, Flare, my Flare project to ServiceNow, I'm going to pretend that I'm an author, this uh, Simon Madcap person. So in ServiceNow, as the administrator, this person has elevated rights, so they're able to do all kinds of things. But I want to take you through this as the author, because you may need to communicate with this person, make sure that certain things are configured the way that they need to be to make you successful in publishing your output up to ServiceNow. So let's hop into ServiceNow and take a look around at all of these different things. Okay, so in ServiceNow, you can see I'm logged in as an administrator. And the first thing that you wanna make sure is that you got a knowledge base. That's where you're gonna be publishing all of your stuff from Flare. So over on the left, I've got these things that are favorited. I'm they're just pinned here. And uh, so I'm gonna go into knowledge, knowledge bases. And you can see we've got, we have a handful of knowledge bases already set up. I've got one called FictionSoft. That's the one that I'm gonna use in this video. So later on in Flare, I'm gonna point to this knowledge base. And if you don't have one set up yet, your the administrator can click new and set up a new knowledge base. So knowledge base is the first thing. Second thing that I wanna talk about is categories. Uh, and I'm gonna click on self-service knowledge. This gives me this different view where I can access my categories. And uh, through my knowledge base, I can get into the categories and articles. And I'm gonna go in here to FictionSoft. And you can see, I have a category that I set up previously and I named it default. I could have named it anything that I want, but here's the deal. So. Publishing from Flare to ServiceNow, you've got some options. You could just publish your output and not associate those articles with any category. That's fine. You can also set up a default category. Again, name it anything you want. And the idea is that from Flare, you could point to that default category and you could put stuff in there. Another option is from Flare, you can map to your TOC so that uh, categories can actually be created on the fly when you publish according to the, the levels and the books in your TOC. And we'll take a look at that. And if something didn't fit in a particular um, book or t uh, from your TOC, it could, it could be directed into your default category. Uh, you could also create categories up here in ServiceNow ahead of time that match your TOC in, uh, in Flare. And then your uh, articles, the ones that are in those TOC books would just go into the uh, categories up here. And that's fine to do too. Uh, we're gonna do a couple of different things here uh, as, as you see as we go forward. All right, now a couple of other things to point out about categories is you could end up with a case where you, let's say you publish from Flare to ServiceNow and you map to uh, your TOC and categories are created. And then later you change your mind about something in your TOC and you go in there and you go, oh, this book, I want to name it something else. And you, and you do. And then you republish and then it'll create this new category and put those, move those articles into that category. And that's fine. But that old category will still be left 
up here on ServiceNow. And so if you want to get rid of that, you just need to do that manually from uh, ServiceNow. Another thing to mention is limitations on levels. Now, ServiceNow, it's great because you could have an unlimited number of uh, nested categories. Just like in Flare, you could have an unlimited number of levels in your TOC, and those could just match up. And so that's really nice. But you can also have a limit in, uh, put a limit on those those levels in ServiceNow. So just be aware that if you come up against that, where you're not able to you know, go past that limit, you might need to have your administrator uh, change that that limit there's also a limit on character levels there can be a, a limit on character levels for your categories so just make sure that whatever you create in flare your toc those books and sub books that they um, can satisfy those requirements or you might need to have your administrator adjust the limit on the character limit on your categories Okay, so that takes care of categories. Now, now we wanna get into setting up the user and giving the user permissions. So the next thing we wanna talk about is the knowledge admin role. This is, this is the role that you want to give to any Flare authors that are gonna be publishing up from Flare to uh, ServiceNow. So I'm going to go into I'm gonna actually search for users here. And it's down here, system security users. And there's a whole gob of users in here and just tons and tons. And I'm gonna search for the one that I'm gonna to pretend to be in this video, Simon. Let's see here, right up here at the top, Simon, Simon Madcap, that's the one. So I'm gonna come in here, select this person. And this is where you can fill out the information and come down here. And you wanna click on this roles tab. Now, these are the roles this person has and knowledge admin is the really important one. Now, I also gave this person knowledge manager uh, that role as well, because that's some additional permissions that you could give them. And knowledge just kind of got added by default because it's inherited. So when you wanna add them, you just click edit and then you add these things. All right. so. The knowledge admin role, that, so you're connecting the user to the knowledge admin role, and then we're going to go connect the knowledge admin role to these uh, access control levels, these permissions. So it all just kind of connects together. Now, theoretically, you could have a different role other than knowledge admin that you could be using. Um, but the reason why we say you select knowledge admin is because it's already set up for the most part with all of the things that that person needs. So I am going to take you now into the next section, which has to do with access control levels. And we're gonna, we're gonna talk about what some of these are. And again, the knowledge admin role um, should already have these set up or you know, most of them set up. But just in case you use something else, I wanna take you through and show you what access control levels are important in here. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna clear this, come back out here and go into system definition tables. Now in here, there, there are a variety of things, access control levels that need to be set up. And a lot of them start with KB. And so I'm just gonna search for that. And actually I'm going, and you can see that they're in here. Um, KB knowledge is one of them. Now, I am not going to take you through and show you the setup on all of these. It's enough to just show you an example on one. But first of all, I'm going to I'm going to put up here on the screen all of these different um, permissions that that you need. So first of all, these are the things that you need in order to manage knowledge bases and categories and articles. All these things that you, you see here, these access control levels and these operations create and read and write and delete. So just, uh, just know that these are the things that need to be connected to that knowledge admin role for that. Then here are a separate group of things that are important if you want to manage keywords, if you're going to be using those, if you're going to be converting your index keywords or your concepts in Flare up uh, and 
into keywords on ServiceNow. So you want to make sure that these are, are also associated with the knowledge admin role. And then there are tags if you want to work do the same thing but with tags these are the things that need to be set up um, for tags and one other thing about tags is by default um, service now uh, makes these visible only to the person who creates them but there's a way in service now that you can um, use different visibility levels for uh, for, for tags so that other people can see them as well. So just, just know that go, going uh, forward. All right, so there are also multilingual um, things that you need to be aware of. So if you're gonna be doing translation and these are the multilingual um, access control levels that you wanna make sure are set up with, uh, that, that are connected to the knowledge admin role. Okay, so now that I've told you the, the ones that are important to look at, let's look at an example of how this is set up. So KB knowledge is the first one that I talked about, and that you know gives you, lets you control or gives you access to manage knowledge bases, categories, articles. So I'm going to click on knowledge, and you can come down here all the way, scroll all the way down. And here you go. You can see these different operations. There's KB Knowledge Create. There's another one, Create, but this one is set as active. These, you, you need these to be set as active. So you can see Create and Delete and Read and Write. I'm going to go in here into this one for Create. Takes a little bit of time on a cloud. And so it opens it up. Eventually, come down here says requires rule knowledge admin. Knowledge admin is connected to this one. That's what you want to see. And you want to see that it's active. Now, I do want to open a couple of these other ones in here. Uh, let's go back out and let's look at KB knowledge. Uh, let's see, KB, actually, I want to go back in here. KB, I went, went back one too far. KB knowledge, right right here, that one set as active. And the reason why I wanna show you this one is just this little thing down here in the script, if you scroll down, this else statement. So one of the things that we had come across in doing testing was there, were, there was an issue where things were published up into draft mode from Flare to ServiceNow and then tried to republish and, uh, and the publish failed. And the trick was to add this else statement with answer equals true into this script. So you, you may not you know, encounter this problem, but in case you do, this might be added, might, might need to be added into this one. Okay, now I want to go all the way back out to the table in here. And I wanna go into uh, KB category. There's another thing I wanna show you in here. So in KB category, go down here, KB category, and we've got all these operations. There's delete, that's the one I wanna open to show you this thing. Okay, so in uh, ServiceNow, you can have categories, nested categories. And one of the things that could be kind of painful is if you've got a bunch of nested categories and then you decide you want to delete them. If you don't have the right permission settings, you might have to delete each nested category separately and it just takes longer. But if you have this admin overrides setting in here, that you can just delete the main category and then all the nested ones will be deleted. Okay, I just wanted to point that out because that might save you some trouble. All right, so that is access control levels. Now, <clears throat> the next, one, next thing that we wanna talk about is setting up additional languages. And uh, I already showed you the access control levels for multilingual output, but you also need to make sure the languages are installed in order to use them if you're gonna be doing multilingual output from Flare. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to this and type in plugins. And so you can see system definition plugins, select this. 
And again, this is cloud-based, so cloud stuff is notorious for taking a little bit of time to load. It's just kind of the way of the world, and some things take longer than others, and this one seems to take a little bit of time because there's a bunch of things that it's going to load in here. You're going to see over a 1,000 things, I think. Yeah, 1,260 results in here. And so that's a lot to go through. What you want to do is search for I 18N. That stands for that's international internationalization. And so it lists these 25 results. These are languages in here. So you scroll down and you see in all these languages, and it's actually not that many languages. There's a whole bunch more languages in the world, but these are the ones that you have to choose from. You come down and you go, oh, there's French. I want I, I'm going to be translated into French. So you click install and you go down a little further and you go German. Yeah, we're going to be doing we're, we're going to be translating from into French and German. So click install. And so these languages will then be installed and you got to give it some time. These can take up to two hours each one. So uh, just be patient for that. All right, so that takes care of the additional languages. And the last thing I want to show you here uh, on ServiceNow is something that you're going to need on the Flare side. It's the uh, secret information stuff. It's this client ID and this client secret. And so over here, I'm going to search for it's um, this OAuth thing. And you click go come in here and look at this and then you click on application registry. So this is this what this is is uh, these are endpoints that the system administer, and administrator can set up and so it allows uh, some external client to come in to connect uh, to ServiceNow. And uh, so you have to create these endpoints and we created one in here called Madcap. And so we're going to use this to tie Flare, the Flare project to ServiceNow. And you can see it's got this client ID thing over here. And I'm actually covering that up uh, part of it, at least, because this is top secret information. Um, you don't want this, the client ID or the client secret. You don't want to give that out or bad things can happen. I mean, just all kinds of unimaginable things like uh, football season will be canceled. And I'm going to click on Madcap here. And you can see there again is the client ID and then the client secret is here and you can click on this little thing to actually see it. So you need to get this, the client ID and your client secret from your system administrator because you're gonna plug that in on the Flare side. Okay, there we go. ServiceNow side, we've looked at all this stuff. Now we want to take a look at some preliminary stuff on the Flare side. Now let's take a look at the Flare side, some things you want to be aware of and maybe set up before beforehand. Okay, the first thing I want to mention is uh, the output type that you need to use, and it's clean XHTML. Now, Flare has lots of output formats that you can use, but the reason why we want to use clean XHTML is that particular format, it just strips away, it just gives you the raw content. So it's going to get rid of all that extra stuff. Uh, so these other output formats will get have this navigation and search and all this stuff. And well, that's not going to work up on ServiceNow. And so we've got this Kleenex HTML target. So you're going to be using that. The next thing I want to point out is that the you, you have three different types of files, in addition to your topics, three different types of files that are really, really important in this process. You got a target, a Kleenex HTML target, destination file, and a table of contents, TOC. And so those are all going to kind of come together, converge, and give you what you want, push it up to service now. I like to tell people to think of their Flare content in, in collections of content. Maybe you just have one collection, like this is the output, it's just all gonna go. But sometimes people have, there are lots of uh, really big Flare projects that people have, and maybe you kind of have them segmented. And so you think, all right, this collection of content I'm gonna put up on ServiceNow, and then later I've got this different collection of content, I'm gonna put that up on ServiceNow. And what you should do is each collection of content, you should have a separate target destination file, TOC, dedicated to each one of those. So for example, in this 
um, video, I'm going to take you through a scenario where I am publishing from a Flare project where I've written about the city of Austin, Texas. Okay. Now, this Flare project, I could have written about a whole bunch of other cities, put them in there, London and New York and San Diego and Tokyo and so on. And each one of those cities, I could consider a different collection of content. I want to publish those up to service now separately. And in, in, if I did that, if I thought of it that way, I would have a different target destination file TOC for each one of those cities. Or I could think of all those cities as just one big collection and and it's all going to go together. That's fine. Uh, but And so in that case, yeah, one, one target, one destination file, one TOC. You don't want... Just, just keep them separate. You're going to be happy, happier with that. What you don't want to do is something like have one target, one destination file, and then a whole bunch of TOCs, maybe for each one of those cities. And then you keep going into the target and swapping out the city, uh, to the TOC for that city, and, uh, and then publishing up. Don't do that. That's going to mess you up. So just keep those collections separate, those individual files. All right. Now, next thing we want to talk about is your TOC. Uh, the structure of it, because you can map up to ServiceNow. Uh, and so those things can become categories or they can be, uh, the articles in them can populate to matching categories. So let's go into Flare. I'm going to show you a little bit about this TOC. Okay, so I have this little Flare project. And so far, I just have stuff written about the city of Austin, Texas. And this is a little TOC that I've got. There's not a whole lot in here. And I can click this to expand it. And you can see, all right, I've got uh, some things at the root, at the, at, the, at the first level anyway, and then books at the first level with uh, topics under them. And the, these books are linked to topics. Um, and then this one has actually sub books in here. And so everything's linked to topics in here. And so you just wanna understand if I decide to use this category or this, uh, this TOC mapping, what's gonna happen? Well, this is at the first level and it's just simply linked to a TOC. So this thing will become a category or populate a matching category. And the, art, and the topic that's linked will become an article in that category. This would become a category, things to do. And the topic linked to that would become an article in that category. These would become, art, these are linked to topics. They would become articles in this category and so on. This would become a category. This would become a subcategory under that one because it's nested. So you get the idea. Just understand how your TOC uh, is going to translate into categories and articles up on ServiceNow. And so perhaps you need to do some tweaking to match things that you already have up on ServiceNow. I don't know, or, or maybe you just want all of these things to be created to create categories on the fly from, you know, from your publishing, from Flare up to ServiceNow. Uh, you, you can decide what you want to do. So another thing I wanna talk about is concepts and keywords because you can have concepts and you can have index keywords in your Flare topics. I'm gonna to open up this one right here. I've got an index keyword in here. I don't have any concepts in any of these uh, topics in, my, in this project. I could, I could have both. But in this case, I just have this one, this one that's called people and this index keyword is in here too. And so there's gonna be an option that we're gonna see soon in our destination file where we can tell Flare, hey, um, I want this, I want my index keywords or my concepts. I want those to become either keywords or tags up on ServiceNow. And uh, it, you, know, you could do both or either. But one of the things you wanna watch out for is you don't wanna space between the words. And we're fine here because this is just one word. But if I opened up this other topic, music, and you can see I've got an index keyword in here, music, space, stuff. So this one's not going to work because it's got this space. So you either want to close up the words or, you know, get rid of words. I could get rid of the word stuff in here and just know that ahead of time to save you some trouble. The next thing to mention has to do with styles. And there is a really important option in the target editor, which we're going to get to, to convert your uh, styles from your style sheet into inline styles. That's because ServiceNow doesn't like external style sheets. That's not go going to work the way that it works in Flare, where you're just pointing this thing right here, this heading to a, uh, a style and, and it just works. But 
in ServiceNow, you're not going to be able to point to that external style sheet. So there's this option in the target editor where you're going to be converting uh, all of your formatting into inline styles. And that's really important because if you don't do that, then you're going to lose your formatting. Now, also uh, in uh, on the subject of styles, we want to let me actually open up the style sheet in here. There is uh, the body style which corresponds to the body tag in your topics. And you can see it right here. And the body tag, if I open up one of these, you can see the outermost tag, I'm looking at the structure bars over on the left, the outermost tag is HTML, within that is the body tag. And then within the body tag is held all the individual tags and nested tags for all of your content. So H1 is not heading one. P is a paragraph. Uh, if I had a list in here, it'd be a UL or an OL with LI tags in there. Uh, if I inserted a table, I'd have table tags. So all this stuff. Normally, what we tell people as a best practice is to set style set of properties that are going to be used in, on lots of things, set them on your body style. So for example, let's say that you wanted to use Helvetica for all your stuff, or at least most of your stuff. Well, <clears throat> it's a lot quicker to set that Helvetica on the body style, and then just let it trickle down to all the other things instead of setting it individually. But here's the problem. ServiceNow isn't going to honor the stuff on this body tag. So if you are thinking of that or have things set on your body style, well, you probably want to do the thing that we tell people to avoid, and that is to set it individually on H1 and P and so on, so that it, uh, so that it will be used. Okay, so just know that the body tag, unfortunately, that isn't, that isn't going to work great for you. Next thing to point out is uh, multimedia. You might have videos that you insert into your topics. Now, if you embed a video in there, Unfortunately, that's not going to come across into ServiceNow, but you could link to, uh, say, YouTube videos. So that's on an external site. That'll work. But uh, videos that you put actually put in your topics, those won't work. Next thing is has to do with the fact that this process is going from Flare to ServiceNow. It's output from Flare, putting it up on ServiceNow. A lot of people ask us, do you go the other way? Do you import from ServiceNow into Flare? No, we don't. <clears throat> Not right now. We don't import. So you don't have this syncing thing going on. And the reason why this is important to mention is that uh, if you publish things from Flare up to ServiceNow, you then don't want to go onto ServiceNow and start messing with those articles, editing those articles. Not unless you know for sure that you're never going to be publishing again, republishing that same stuff from Flare. Because what happens is later on you go and you make some changes in, in that topic in Flare, you republish, it's going to overwrite that those things that you made, those changes you made up on ServiceNow. So avoid that situation. I also want to mention that you can exclude things from getting up onto ServiceNow in different ways. So I have this little project in here. There's not that many files, but I might not want all these topics to get up onto ServiceNow. How do you keep them up? Well, you've got you've got choices. Uh, one of them there's actually there's really three basic ways, and one of them is in the destination file, which we're going to look at. Uh, pretty soon here and you can exclude specific topics from getting up to service now that way you can also use conditions which is one of the most common ways here in the project organizer you can see i've got a condition tag set created and i've got all these you know default conditions that just kind of came with things and then i created one called service now hide so the idea here is i could I could apply this condition, service now hide, and it could be named anything. I could apply that to topics that I wanted to leave out of this publishing process, or I could apply it to content within those topics to exclude that. So that's an option. And then in the target, you would just tell Flare to exclude this condition when you're for that for that target. Okay, so that's the second one. The third one is this actually really handy. Uh, 
option that's in the target editor. And we're going to look at that one e later. It's, it's really cool. It, it really does a lot of work, this one little option. I also do want to point out that I talked about multilingual output on the ServiceNow side. So if you are doing that on the Flare side, let's just look at a target here. I've got a couple of targets in here already. One's an HTML5, one's a PDF. So maybe I'm going to use these for different, you know, different things. This HTML5 might be for, you know, a full help system. This one is just for a reference guide, a PDF user guide, something like that, that PDF. I'm going to open up this HTML5 target just, just to show you, even though we're not going to use HTML5 in, in this thing. So in these targets, you come down you, and you got this language tab. Now you can see I've got one row in here and it's English United States. That's the original language. That's what I'm writing in. But I could take this Flare project and I could send it out maybe via um, Madcap Lingo, send it to some translators in, for these different languages and they translate, uh, they take that, they translate it and they give it back and then you bring it back into Flare. And when you bring those translated files back into Flare, then you get these extra rows in here. Maybe one for French, German, Italian, Spanish, all these rows. And so each one of those represents, all right, the, that's the translated content for all the same stuff that's in this project. And so then you publish up to service now and as long as you have those matching languages installed you got multilingual output up there and the final thing that i want to mention is there's a lot of settings there's a lot of things that are kind of going on here and i would encourage people to practice publishing maybe in a test develop uh, test development instance go through these settings because you're going to see there's a lot of them and maybe practice, practice publishing, go on to ServiceNow, see how it looks, maybe change, delete some stuff on ServiceNow, come back, try again, just practice until you get the, the results that you're really looking for. All right, now we're ready. Now we're ready to actually get in, start doing things in Flare. The very first thing that you need to make sure that you have, you got to make sure that you have uh, Madcap Connect for ServiceNow installed. And this usually happens when you are first installing Flare. You first get it and you double click on that EXE. It opens up the wizard. And on the first page of the wizard, there are two options. One is custom and one or one's default and the other one, the second one is custom. And so maybe you just kept default and you and thought, I, I don't know, I don't need to customize anything. And you just go next, 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 it's installed. Well, if you select custom, it has Madcap Connect for ServiceNow as one of the options that you can, you can enable. Now, maybe this thing was already enabled when you installed, you're all good. You don't need to worry. That's fine. But maybe you're going, I don't remember what I did. I've got Flare installed. I, I don't, I don't know if I've got Madcap Connect for ServiceNow or whatever it's called installed. No problem. It's really easy. We're going to open up uh, the control panel in Windows and you can easily check and install it if you don't have it. Okay, so I've got the control panel open. You can see it's in programs, programs and features. And I've got uh, actually a couple of versions of Flare installed here. I'm gonna click on Flare 2021, click uninstall change. And this is going to bring up this UI that's basically saying, hey, you got this installed. What do you want? What do you want from me? You want to modify it, repair it, uninstall it, and you click modify. And these are the options. These are the things you would have seen that first time around if you had selected custom. And you can see all these things are enabled. It's Madcap Connect for ServiceNow, that's the important one. And this is already enabled. If it's not enabled on yours, then click this to enable it and click on next, go through this thing and you're good. I already have it installed, maybe you do too. You could just cancel out of this, no problem. Okay, so that is the first thing that's really important because having that installed is going to allow us to do all the other things. And we're going to start next with our destination file where actually most of the work happens. Okay, so up until now, it's been a whole bunch of preliminary stuff. Now we're gonna get into the real meat of everything. It starts with the destination file. Okay, in Flare, you want to come over on the left side, Project Organizer, and we've already got, remember, the, the main files other than topics that we're interested in here are 
targets, TOCs, and destination file. We already have our TOC created. I created that ahead of time. I've actually got three TOCs in here. This one, online TOC, maybe I wanna use this for another purpose, uh, the, the full help system, something. Print TOC, I wanna use that for a PDF. I created this one for uh, ServiceNow, and I named it ServiceNow Austin. You can name it anything you want. Uh, I just named it that because I know that, hey, this TOC is dedicated to um, publishing my Austin content up to ServiceNow. And now I can go up to destinations and you can see that it's empty. And I'm going to right click on this and select add destination. And I can give this any name I want. I've got ServiceNow. Maybe I'll add Austin in here in case I'm going to do other cities in the future and click add. And so a destination file, all this is, is it's a bunch of settings that al allows you to take your flare output for a target and move it somewhere else. And so ServiceNow isn't the only kind of destination file, it's just one type. And in this case, we just happen to be wanting to move things from flare up to ServiceNow. So the files added here on the left, got the destination editor on the right. Under type, you want to select Madcap Connect for ServiceNow. And the next thing that you do is come over here and activate it. So you click this, and this is where you put in your ServiceNow license key that you get from Madcap. And I actually have it over on this other screen, and I'm going to paste it in here and click Next. And then you put in your name here. Let's just say I'm Simon Madcap, and let's put in an email here. Just going to paste this from the other screen. There we go. Click next again and finish. And we are done. So now this activate changes to deactivate. Let's us know when things are going to expire. Next thing we need to do is come in here to log in credentials. And you click on this. And I already got, you can see I've got some information in here. I'm kind of hiding it. Again, because this is all top secret stuff. We don't want horrible, horrible things to happen. And, but this is old stuff and I'm actually going to replace it with the new stuff. Okay, so I've got my uh, instance in here and I've, re I've got my client ID and my client secret, which I got from my administrator. We saw before where that is up on ServiceNow and now I can just click next. And now got to put in a uh, username and password in my username. In this case, I am Simon and this is my password and I'm going to click finish and okay and it worked so we see this turns to green credentials are set and we're just going to scroll down here to these other fields and you see the development uh, the instance is in here already uh, because it just populated based on what we gave it and now we need to fill out these fields we need to tell flare what do you want? What are the rules here? So the first thing that we come to is use TOC to define categories. So this is all about looking at your TOC and maybe you wanna map that to categories up on ServiceNow. Either they're gonna be created on the fly or they're gonna populate existing categories up on ServiceNow. And we are gonna use this, but right now let's deselect it because this first time around we're going to, we're not going to map we're, we're gonna do something else. Default knowledge base. You saw that it had several up there, a few, a handful up there, up on ServiceNow. We want FictionSoft, that's the one we created. And then default category. So you could leave this empty. You could just say, I don't, I don't care about categories. I'm just wanna publish my stuff, fine, leave that empty. But in our case, I created this category here called default up there. And that's the one that I want to use. And so I'm going to point to that. Next thing is this exclusions field. And remember, I said there are three basic ways to keep things from getting up on the service now. This is one of them. And this already populates with a few files, default.htm, and it's they're separated by commas, default underscore csh.htm, and so on. These are files that just get automatically get generated in the output, but they're things that you probably don't care about. They're, they're, 
they're not necessary up on ServiceNow, so they're automatically put in here. And you could type comma and add other specific topics if you want to keep them out. That's one way to do it. I think there are better ways. I think conditions is a better way to do it, but you could use this field if you want. Now, content options. So there's the workflow up on ServiceNow. Things can be in draft mode. So if you select draft here, and you publish them up to ServiceNow, they're going to start out in draft mode. And then you could up on ServiceNow, then you could take them through the process and move them to these other statuses. Um, I'm actually going to select published on this because I just kind of want to do this quickly. And so what that means is when I publish them, and you go look at them on service. Now they're automatically gonna be in published status. So that's what that's for. These next uh, several fields or check boxes down here are for keywords and tags. So ServiceNow has keywords and they've got the concept of tags up there. These things that you know help you find things, search for things quicker. So I've got, I showed you that I've got some index keywords. I don't have any concepts and I, just ask myself, do I want my index keywords to be converted automatically to ServiceNow keywords? And I'll select, yes, I do. I don't have any concepts, so I'm just gonna leave this one empty for now. Delete stale keywords, I'll select that because if I publish from Flare to ServiceNow and then later I end up changing things and uh, those keywords, I rename them or get rid of them. Now up on ServiceNow, they're old. And so this will automatically get rid of those. I could also put in default keywords if I wanted to just put in keywords that I wanted to be applied to all of my published articles. I'm going to leave that blank. Over on generate tags. So you, these are the same fields, but for tags, do I want to convert these things to tags? Well, I'm going to leave these deselected for now, and then we'll come back to that later. View. This field, this is just an internal shortcut thing for you. Uh, so maybe you want to put in your, your, your path to your stuff on ServiceNow because you can't remember it. So you just put it in here. Then you click this button and it'll open up your browser to that location. It's just a shortcut. So by default, we have madcapsoftware.com in here. If you click this, it'll open up the madcapsoftware.com madcap software website. Uh, if you put ebay.com in here, this will open up ebay.com. So it's just, if you want to use it, use it. If you don't, don't. The stuff at the bottom has to do with the log file because when you generate output and publish it up to uh, ServiceNow, there's a log file that's created. And this log file is really important because it helps direct everything where it should go and all these rules that you're giving it. So you can't deselect the first one. You have to have the log file, but you can choose whether you want one of these selected or not. Upload only changed files. This is a nice thing to have because if you keep you know, republishing from Flare to ServiceNow, if you only make changes to a few files, well, it speeds up the process. It's only gonna be concerned with the files that you change. Um, normally I would keep this on. I'm just gonna deselect it for this uh, video just because I'm going to be doing some testing here. I'm going to get rid of some stuff on ServiceNow as I go through these different scenarios. And I just want to do a fresh, re, you know, publish each time as if it's the first time. But normally when, when I, I'm ready, I've, I've done all my testing, I would probably select that and use that to speed things up. Remove outdated published files. That's kind of the same thing as this stale thing here where you publish things from Flare to ServiceNow. Maybe a topic was relevant some time ago, and now you delete it. It's no longer relevant, and then you republish. Well, that old article is up on ServiceNow, and this will get rid of it because it's you know it's no longer important or uh, relevant. Okay, now we're just going to save this all, and we're done. The, that's the destination file. That's where most of the work is done on the Flare side. Um, and we are going to come back to this later and, and make a few changes and do it again. But for now, we're done. Destination file. Now we move on to the next file. We've got our destination file. We've got our TOC. Now we want to create and edit our target. All right. We're getting closer and closer. Next thing, our target. So in Flare, come over on the left. Targets, you saw I already have a couple. 
in here, but I need a Kleenex HTML. So I am going to right click this, select add target, opens this up. Now I'm gonna give it a name. Um, I have Salesforce in here from previous. I'm gonna type service now, and I'm going to type Austin so that I know that this is for service now going up to Austin. Okay, and now output type, I am going to select clean XHTML and click add. And this is going to open up. Now you can see I've got my target over here with my others, but it's clean XHTML and it opens up here. And we're just gonna come up here to the general tab, start at the top, work our way down. There's a whole bunch of tabs. There's a whole bunch of fields in here. And a lot of them may not apply to you. Um, some of them may, uh, but they're kind of peripheral to this uh, video. I'm going to point out the things that are really important for the purposes of publishing from Flare to ServiceNow. So the first thing on the general tab, master TOC, come here and we've got our three TOCs. I want this one, ServiceNow Austin. And then you come down here to styles. This is really important. Convert style sheet styles to inline styles. Select that. That's the thing I talked about before where ServiceNow doesn't like the external style sheet. So we're going to convert these things to inline so that you retain your formatting. Conditional text. Uh, remember, I had created this one called ServiceNow Hide, and I haven't applied it to anything, so it's not really going to do anything, but I might in the future. So I can just click exclude on that if I do uh, use that condition in the future. I'm going to ignore variables publishing or of variables. I'm going to come down to publishing. I'm not going to ignore publishing. That's really important. So publishing, <clears throat> this lists all of your destination files. And you can see we only have one. So we only get one row. If I had 35 of 35 destination files, I'd get 35 rows in here. And then so you just look at this and you go, OK, this is my I'm publishing to service uh, now my Austin stuff, what do I want? Do I want this one? Yes, I do. Click publish. And if you had others in here, you would just not select publish on those because you don't want to use those destination files. Now we're going to skip these things, come down to advanced. Scroll down on advanced, go past all those fields. The thing we want to look at is this content to include. This is the third way to exclude content. So the first one was here on the destination uh, file, this exclusions thing. The second one is conditions, which I just talked about. And this is the third. And this is really nice because you select this and you got three options. One is all content. And so this is you just saying, hey, just, just publish everything, all this content, unless it's excluded by one of these other methods, this exclusions tab on the destination file or conditions. Otherwise, it's just going to publish everything. But you can also say, hey, I want to I'm going to publish things according to what's in the TOC, stuff that's linked directly from the TOC, or this one is content linked directly or indirectly from the target. I could select one of those, and I will uh, as we come back around to this. But for now, let's just select all content. And now let's just come up here and save. And that's it. That's all we're going to do, all the changes we're going to make in the target. And now we're going to move on to the next section, which has to do with building and publishing and viewing this stuff up on ServiceNow. Okay, hey, look at us, we're doing things. All right, so those three main files, we got them all created, we got all of our settings in there. Now the fun begins, let's build, publish and view. So I've got my target open, I'm just gonna come up to the top and select build. That's gonna open up this builds window pane down here at the bottom, just gonna move it down a little bit. And this will go really fast because this is tiny little project and sometimes you have to move these things over so you can see them. Now, first thing you want to do whenever this is true of any, anything, anything that you're building or publishing, you want to look over on the right and see did uh, all of this come out okay? Do you have any warnings or errors or anything like that? It's green, so it published successfully, but it did give me a warning. So I'm going to go check it out. So I select that row, click open build log, what happened it says media queries are not supported and are removed when converting to inline styles. Oh, okay. So I selected that option to convert to inline styles on the target. And it's just letting me know this thing about media queries. So media queries are these things dealing with your style sheet. So it allows you to have different looks for your uh, topics in the output, whether it's a really big wide screen or a, a more narrow iPad 
tablet or a smartphone, even more narrow. And you're looking at this going, well, I'm publishing up to service now. This doesn't really apply. I don't, I don't care about this. So maybe you just, you, you ignore it. You don't want to see it in the future. And the really cool thing that you can do, <clears throat> you have control over what you are warned about and what you're not warned about. And you can ignore this at the global level, go to file options, and that opens up the options dialog. And down here on the build tab, you can enable or disable. These are all the warnings that you could possibly get. And the one that we had is in here and you could disable it, click the checkbox to remove it, click okay. Well, that's going, now you're not gonna get warned about this thing if, uh, for any of your targets, but maybe you do want to be warned about that for an HTML5 target in the future. So you go, well, let's ignore it for our target just down at that level. So it's just for that target. And look at our at our ID 10152. So I'm going to come in here to my target and in the target, it's called warnings. You come in here and I'm going to scroll up to the top. You need to enable this thing. Otherwise, it's going to use those things from the options dialog. And I'm going to type in 10152. And there it is. And so I can disable that and click Save. OK, so now I've taken care of that. And that's all kind of beside the fact. Uh, but you do need to, you just need to be aware of warnings and errors as, as you're doing anything, any kind of output in Flare. So that's why I went through and did that. So I can, uh, I can rebuild the target, or I can just click, and this is true the first time, I can just click publish. And if it says, hey, it's not up to date, then you say, yeah, publish it or build it too. So it's going to go through this on this next line. It's building it first, and then it's uh, going to go through the process of actually publishing. So the build the first time went really, really fast. It's just a faster process. Uh, not that many files in here, but the publishing process takes a little bit more time. And you can see over here, I do have the one, but now it's in ignored warnings. It's like, yeah, this is something that I do. I did get a warning, but it's, I kind of set it aside over here. So my warnings column now is at zero. So this will finish just in a bit. This is one place, whether you're building or publishing, where you could experience an error, an issue. And if the difference between warnings and errors is warnings are just things like, hey, you might want to know about this thing that happened, but otherwise it published successfully. And that could be broken links. It could be all kinds of things like the media queries deal. Errors is when <laughs> something really breaks down. It doesn't complete su successfully. And you would see red here and you would see a number in here. Well, that didn't happen here. It completed successfully. Let's say that you did get an error. And it's like, oh man, this thing didn't finish. Well, again, you select the row, you go to open build log, three tabs in here, one's messages, warnings, errors. If you got an error, you come in here and you look at the text and maybe you can figure it out from the text. And then you go, oh yeah, that happened. Go back, fix it, whatever in Flare, try again. If you can't figure it out from that, what I usually do is go over here to messages. This is just sort of, it starts at the top when you first started the, whatever the process was and just runs down, shows you all the stuff that was happening. And you come down to the bottom, you can see mine says publish complete. So no worries for me in this one. But if I had an error, I would see at least what was happening when things broke. And maybe that's enough of a clue that I can go in and fix the thing, try again. Now, maybe you do this and you still are thinking, well, I, I don't know. I still don't know what happened. I, I have no idea. Well, uh, that's when you contact tech support. Go do that. They're great. That's what they're there for. They're amazing. They'll help you. Remember this also, this process, These this is two companies that are kind of working. Uh, this process is a uh, is involved with these two companies, Madcap Software and ServiceNow. It's possible, not likely, but it's possible you could encounter a bug. Most of the time, you're just going to go through this and it works. But if you do hit a bug, it could be a bug on the Madcap side. It could be a bug on the ServiceNow side. Don't know. Contact tech support. They help you through it. They always do. No worries. Okay. It published successfully. Let's go up to ServiceNow and check it out. My session expired, so I'm gonna log back in. 
Okay, so I'm in and I'm going to come over to self service knowledge and you're going to see the knowledge bases. There's my fiction soft one before I just had one article in there. Now I've got 16. I had my one article. If I scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see it. My SN article. That's the one I first created up on ServiceNow. But now it added these 15 others from Flair. And a couple of things to point out. They all are using this default category because that's what I told it to do in the destination file. So they're all in here. And it's all of my topics in here, except for those few that were in the exclusions field in the destination file. If you come down, you see title page. Well, that's a topic that was created in Flare for the purposes of a PDF. And so it's really not important up here on uh, ServiceNow, but it was included because I, to I told it to include everything. Come down here, there's another topic called other things. This is just a topic in the project. It's not in the TOC, but I didn't tell Flare to leave it out. And so it included it. Uh, I will also want to look at the keywords because those were some settings that we provided in the destination file. So I come to system definition tables and it's KB underscore keyword, I believe. Yeah, so here it is, KB keyword, knowledge keyword, select that. And then you scroll down here, there's all kinds of stuff in here. It's just sort of hidden. It's show list is what I'm interested in. Select that, there it is, people. So it just gave me one keyword. Remember, uh, I have uh, actually a couple of keywords. I've got this one in music, music stuff. And the other one was here for these couple of topics, people. This is the only one that worked because the other one for music had that space in it. And so it just left it out. That's why I'm only seeing that. Let's come and check out tags. Now tags, I just left, uh, un, it was deselected. Uh, I think it's this system definition tags, select that, yeah. So <clears throat> I do have some tags in here, but these were already up on ServiceNow. I didn't add these from Flare. Uh, if I did, if I had selected that thing, you would see um, my stuff here too, but I didn't. So that's what you get uh, based on the options that we chose that first time. Now I'm actually going to go and delete things on ServiceNow, come back and do this again. All right, so I got rid of some stuff up on ServiceNow. Let's go back into our files, make some changes, try again. All right, so let's start with the destination file. Let's come down here and see what changes we wanna make. So we left this use TOC to define categories option disabled before, let's enable it. So we're gonna map to our TOC. It's going to look at that and it's going to create categories and put the articles in the right places. We're going to leave default category set because maybe there's something that doesn't fit in uh, one of these categories that are created on the fly. And so if that happens, it'll just put it in our default category. And then let's come down here. And before we had not enabled the uh, tags, let's do that. Let's create tags now. And we'll also select this delete stale of uh, option, just same, same as we did for keywords over here. But so in addition to creating keywords, we're gonna create tags. All right, so that's what we're gonna do on the destination file, save that. Let's go to our target and see what we wanna change on that. And let's go to the advanced tab, come down before we told it, hey, just include everything. Now let's select content linked directly from the TOC and let's save that. So the idea is, it's gonna look at things that are in the TOC. That's what's gonna be included. Other things are gonna be excluded if it's not in the TOC. Cool. And the other thing that we wanna change is this uh, notice that we had the problem with things not this not getting up here, this keyword, because we had the space in it. Let's fix that. So little trick here, go to view, index window. And this shows you the, index keywords, I've got only got two in here, people and music stuff. And music stuff, if I expand it, you can see it's in several topics. And now you could go into each topic and, and change the keyword, but the easiest thing to do is just this. Come over here, I could remove that space where I could just remove the word stuff. Don't need the word stuff, do that, press enter. Now it's saying, okay, do you wanna update these 
files? Yes, I do. And there it is. So on this one, you can see it's just one word now. Now it should work. OK, done with that. Let's go back to our target. Let's rebuild. So it's going to go through this process. Let's see what happens with our warnings and errors and stuff. OK, so we still have our ignored warning. We took care of that before, but we now we have a new warning. <clears throat> Let's see what this is about. Select the row, click Open Build Log. Now it says cross-reference to excluded file removed from output. Huh. Scroll over on the right, there's the topic where the problem is, that people one. And if I double click it, it opens up that topic. So I know it has to do with a cross-reference. I have a couple of cross-references in here. This one, this one. Well, I already know that it, the problem is with this cross-reference. The reason I know is because this topic right here, famous Austin folks, is in my TOC. This one is not in my TOC. And so uh, I told Flair, hey, just include stuff that's in the TOC. And so it's, OK, I will. But you're linking to this thing. This thing's not, this other thing's topic is not included. So you're going to have a problem with this cross-reference. That's what it's warning me about. So what I could do is I could just remove this content, or I could just, I could, if I keep it in here, it's going to keep the text, but it's going to strip out the link, which is going to be weird because it'll say, here are some other things, but <laughs> where are the other things? You can't get to them. So I'm actually just going to leave this because I want to show you up on ServiceNow um, what happened here. So I built, but I haven't published yet. Let's go ahead and publish. And it'll run through this. Uh, I'm, it's going to take a few minutes here. So I'm actually just going to pause and come back when it's done. OK, so it finished publishing completely, successful, no, no problems in any of those columns. Let's go to ServiceNow and check it out. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is come here, self-service knowledge, look at now FictionSoft. I used to have 16 articles. Now I got 13, so some were left out. Come in here, and the default category, now I just have this one article in here. This is the one I originally created. Everything else got put into these other categories, which were created on the fly. So introduction has that one. And then music down here, uh, I've got that. And I, then I've got these sub uh, categories underneath that that were created. Because remember, I had the nested books. So all right, that's pretty cool. Now, one of the problems, though, is that remember, I left the uh, that link problem on that people topic. And here it is. Here are some other things. You see how it just stripped out that link. And so that's why you need to pay attention to warnings. OK, so that's what happened with our articles. Let's go check out our keywords here. KB keyword. There it is. Click on this. And let's scroll down and select show list. And there we go, people. And now we have music because we got took care of that space. And if we go into tags, and it's down here, system definition tags. And now we still have all those other tags that we had before. But now we have music. We got people. So that worked. Cool. All right, we're going to circle back. I'm going to delete stuff in ServiceNow one more time. We're going to go back in, make one more tweak, try again, and see another thing. Okay, so one last time, going to go back in. Just going to make one change, though, in our target. So in the target, uh, the one thing that I want to change is this content to include, because I'm not happy with that missing link. So now I can select content link to directly or indirectly from the target. Save that. Let's rebuild. And so now that should include that topic, because it is linked from another topic that is in the TOC, and that should handle everything. So look in here, that finished, zero warnings, ignored warnings, cool. We're good with that. Now we just need to publish. Again, it's going to take uh, just a little bit of time, so I'm going to pause, come back to this when it's finished. Okie dokie, it finished publishing. Let's go back into ServiceNow. Let's look at this, ServiceNow Knowledge. Before we had 13 articles, now we got 14. So it included that other things topic. 
And here it is. It wasn't in the TOC, so it didn't match up with any of these categories that were created. So it dumped it into our default um, category in here. And if I look at people, open up that article, there it is. The link is back. So success. That just gives you an idea of how different settings can affect what you get up on ServiceNow. And again, I encourage you to practice publishing till you kind of get it all straight and are getting the results on ServiceNow that you want. Okay. Hey, we made it all the way through. So now you've seen things that you need to be aware of before you even start the process, both on the ServiceNow side and on the Flare side. We've gone through all the steps. You know what all the options are. We've practiced. We've gone in and looked and seen what happens. So now I hope that uh, you feel confident enough that you can just go in there and do the same thing and everything will just work the way that you want. Thank you so much for watching this video. We will talk to you next time.